intelligence of change initiative other distinguished guests. It gives me great pleasure to have the opportunity to congratulate for launching this important project. As we all know, our joint efforts towards sustainable development make sense only if we strive towards fulfilling the rights of all people equally and regardless of their background. At the same time, we also know that we cannot tackle the challenges of equal development without the involvement of women and girls. The starting point of the Champions of Change project is in understanding the great challenges of gender inequality, discrimination, gender-based violence, and other factors preventing women and girls from realizing their full potential. These seem difficult things to change, but change is possible. The Nordic countries, including my home country, Finland, are often referred to as the head of gender equality. And surely the situation is good. However, it has not always been the case. In fact, I've seen a significant change during my lifetime. When I was born, in 1966, you can count that I'm 55 years old now, Finland got a new government and all the ministers were male, not a single woman in the government in 1966. Before and after that, we had some individual female ministers, but we had to enter the 21st century before seeing any significant change. It is only during the last 20 years that, on average, half of the ministers have been men, half women. In the current government, more than half of the ministers are female, including the prime minister, who in addition is young, she's only 35 years old. This kind of change at the top level cannot happen without things first changing on other levels and without several people contributing to it. Some women had to be the first ones to stand up and challenge the male dominance in politics. Some men had to be the first ones to support them. Political parties needed to nominate female candidates. Finnish citizens had to vote for female uh, members of parliament. And for a long time, male prime ministers had to appoint female ministers. The change for improved equality requires progressive and courageous individuals, male and female. It also requires role models, champions of change. However, we cannot pretend that change is always easy. Gender roles are deeply rooted in the culture of each society. They are part of the structures that help people define their behavior, roles, status, identities, and maybe the whole meaning of life. Changing gender roles may thus cause anxiety. It may mean a need to redefine ourselves as individuals and as part of the community, and it can be difficult. At the same time, changing gender roles may be a liberating opportunity that opens new windows for being part of and contributing to family, community, and the overall society. I am convinced that the champions of change approach of dialogue and conversation can help find those new roles and see the positive outcomes of change. Last, I'm thrilled by the focus that the champions of change concept places on young people. The new generation has every right to take leading roles in defining what future society will look like. In the end, they are the ones who will have to live in that future. We, the older generation have our strengths in sharing our knowledge and understanding with the younger ones. Still, we have no first-hand experience or of what it is like to be young in the 2020s. Thus, I sincerely hope that we can learn to listen, support, encourage and give space for the youth to be the spearheads of change. With these words, I want to stop talking and start listening. Congratulations to all the champions of change.